talking about, uh, we've been going uh, on Wednesday nights talking about our inheritance. How many know every one of you has an inheritance and that inheritance has already been paid for? It's already been, it's already been written out in His last will and testament. And we've got to begin to realize that so that we can receive it. Amen? And so let's go on a little bit further. Last week we didn't get, get it up on the internet. And so I'm going to touch a little bit kind of differently on, on things on that. But praise God, uh, we're going we're gonna to get into this. Now, uh, Romans, go with me one again, once again to Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter, I'm sorry, Romans chapter 4 verse 13. Romans chapter 4, verse 13. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world. Everybody say the world. How many know the inheritance is everything, <clears throat> everything that's in this world? Was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. <coughs> in other words, you've got to believe for your inheritance. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect. Because the law works wrath, for where no, no law is, there is no transgression. Therefore it is of faith, that it might be by grace. To the end the promise might be sure. To all the seed, everybody say all the seed. All. Say that's me. Not to that only which is of the law, but to that which is, which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. I mean, this is New Testament, and yet it's saying that Abraham is the father of us all in respect to faith. Verse 17, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations before him uh, whom he believed. Even God, who makes alive the dead, and calls those things which be not as though they were. Hallelujah. The Word of God here is talking about our inheritance, and it is saying you need to call it forth. Call those things which be not as though they were. The blessing of Abraham made Abraham rich. Hallelujah. You know every patriarch in the Old, Old Testament was wealthy? Abraham, he had flocks and herds and silver and gold and servants and maidservants and, and camels and donkeys. I mean, Abraham, whew, I mean, he, he had more stuff. <laughs> and, and, and he was blessed, hallelujah. There's something about the blessing of Abraham, the blessing of of Abraham that now goes to all his seed. Did you hear that? All his seed. And how many know you are of the seed of Abraham? Hallelujah. And so in other words, it's talking about an inheritance, everything that's in this world. Abraham already knew how to receive it. He received it by faith. And now it's reaching out to us and telling us, if you will believe. If you will believe there's an inheritance. How many know that Adam walked in that blessing? Adam walked before the fall in the blessing of all the good things that, was, that were in this earth. Amen. But after the fall, the enemy took, to put, took control of this earth. But now, everybody say now. Jesus has made a way that the earth, the world, all that is in it, glory be to God, the inheritance... And the wealth, come on, <laughs> has been given to Abraham and given to his seed. Hallelujah. And Abraham is, the, is really the patriarch of faith. He is our father of faith who has taught us how to receive the inheritance. And not only taught us how, but he had it. How many know you want to be taught by somebody that actually got some? Amen. And Abraham walked in it. Glory be to God. God made this world this earth, for man. Did you hear what I said? Turn with me to Genesis chapter 1, and I want to get it, just get this so clear that we'll be able to run with it. God has an inheritance for every single person. You don't get it when you die. How many know you don't need any of the things of this world uh, when you get to heaven? No, you need them now. And... Uh, 
uh, you don't get an inheritance when you die. You get an inheritance when the one who is giving it died. And he died almost 2,000 years ago. Genesis chapter 1. Let's go down here to verse 13. No, I'm sorry, verse 20. Go down to verse 20. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that has life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open uh, expanse or firmament of heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature that moves, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and every winged fowl after its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters in the sea, and let, fowl, uh, let the fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after its kind, uh, cattle and creeping thing, and uh, beast of the earth after its kind, and it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after its kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creeps upon the earth after its kind, and God saw that it was good. And God said, Let us make man after our kind. How many know that it is going right in line? Everything was made after its own kind. But he says it this way in verse 26, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. I mean, no, that shows the Trinity right there. And it says, And let them have dominion. Everybody say dominion. Dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created He Him, male and female created He them. And God blessed them. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Woo, how many know that God is the source for man to dominate, to take dominion? God said, I want you to take dominion of earth. God always had a plan that we would, we would have dominion in this world. Amen? And the blessing is the source. The blessing is what He released. The blessing is the source of all things. And God is the source of the blessing. Amen. Now notice. He said, number one, be fruitful. Be fruitful. Now we're talking about dominion. We're talking about going forth in this world like God. I said like God. You're not God. We're like God. We're His children. Amen? Amen. And when we realize that we are His children, glory be to God, we are the children of God. We walk like Him. We talk like Him. We do the same things like Him. Amen. And we, we, we are the number one to be fruitful. Now, how, how are we to be fruitful? God has given us seed, both natural seed, now hear me, and spiritual seed. Natural seed would cause us to be fruitful in our body, fruitful in our harvest, Fruitful in the things of this world. <coughs> Spiritual seed is the Word. Did you hear what I said? Spiritual seed is another way that God wants us to be fruitful. You cannot be fruitful in spiritual things without the Word. The Word is the seed. Parable of the sower. The sower sows the Logos. So we sow the Word of the living God, and that Word gets deep down in our hearts, and we produce the Word, just like God produced the Word. He said, light be. That was the exact Hebrew. Light be. And He took it from the source. Oh, my, somebody's going to get this. He took it from the source. How many God has given us the source? God has given us both natural and spiritual seed. 
and he is saying, I want you to be like me, and I want you to produce fruit. Hallelujah. Now, of course, fruit is also the character of God, and, and there's a lot of different aspects, but, but you still have to get that from the Word. Amen? Number two, multiply. Multiply. <laughs> we're not just getting by, but we're going to multiply. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're, 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 uh, you, you're not supposed to be in sub subtraction. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? God wants you to multiply. Uh, I, I think God looks down upon you and He says, you've been, you've been thinking far short of the source. You've been thinking far short of the blessing. You, you've, you've put a limit on God and God said, there's no limits. Oh my goodness. When you realize what you have in the Word, you are supposed to be moving over into exponential multiplication. <laughs> Woo, and diversification. God's saying, you know, you've been thinking, well, I'm just going to do this one little thing. And God said, well, I had this for you. Well, I'm just going to do this. Right. No, he said, I had this. Come on. Glory be to God. He said, I'm going to make you in my image after my likeness. I'm going to make you after my kind. Whew. Somebody going to get this tonight. <laughs> Whew. Now, number three, he said, replenish. Now, I know there's different, different ideas on this replenish, but let's just look at the, the Hebrew word replenish. It means to fill. It means to flourish. Hallelujah. God said, I want you to fill this earth, and I want you to flourish in this earth. I want you to walk in abundance in this earth. I don't want you to walk in lack. Matter of fact, lack is of the curse. God wants you to be fruitful, he wants you to multiply, and He wants you to replenish or fill and, fl and, and flourish in this world. Amen. Hallelujah. So you've got to get that. You've got to get that so deep down in your spirit. Amen. You've got to know that you know that you know. Glory to God. You've got to know. You've got to have that so deep down in your spirit that you are to be blessed, and you're working the same blessing that God worked when He said, Light be. Hallelujah. The source of all things is in God, and God is in you. Uh, <laughs> number four, and he said, and subdue. Subdue means to dominate. To subdue means to dominate. That's what that word means. That's the dominion. He, he said, these are the things that I want you to walk in and to understand that they come out of the blessing." When you walk in the blessing, you will walk in these things. Amen. God wants you to dominate. He wants you to subdue the world. He wants you to dominate the world. The world is not supposed to be dominated by, by, by the heathen, by the pagan, by the unbeliever. It's supposed to be dominated by the church. When we realize who we are and what we have and, and the authority of the believer, we will dominate. Hallelujah. You know, when you think of the world, they dominate. Amazon. My goodness, Amazon came in and all they do is dominate. They I mean, they, they started out, I thought they were just kind of like books or something. Now they're everything. They're everything. And, they, and they're even dominating how you get it to your house. People, people now think, well, I, I don't need to go to the store. I'm going to save gas. I'm just going to go through Amazon. Well, what is, it, what is Amazon doing? They're dominating. They're dominating. They're dominating the competition. How many know we're supposed to be dominating? Come on, somebody. He said, I want you to subdue this world. I want you to dominate it. I don't want you to just be sheep trying to get by. He said, I want you to... Begin to multiply. I want you to begin to dominate. I want you to begin to take dominion. How I many know God is, is in dominion of, of the third heaven? That's, he's in complete dominion of that. But you know God loved us so much He gave us earth. Amen. Now God is still over us and he, He'll, he'll kind of guide you and show you. and He's trying he try to show you. But He also said you're a king. And because you're a king, you have the right to decree a thing. You have the right to speak the word of the living God with boldness. 
God has given us His precious promises, and He said, I want you to decree those things, and I want you to use them to bring in your inheritance. Your inheritance is in the source. And you are in the source. So when you speak from the source, you have unlimited, come on somebody, everything that you've been thinking has been so small compared to your potential. You have the potential of God. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Somebody going to get this. Glory to God. Turn with me to Luke chapter 19. God said even greater works you'll do than Jesus. My, 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 my. Luke. Now, I know some people say, well, I, I, I don't want to do that. I, I, God is God and I'm not. Well, what are, what are you? Well, I, I'm just an old sinner saved by grace. Well, I think that's what you were before you got saved. You know, I mean, before you got saved, you were an old sinner. But if you're saved, you're a new creation. You're just as if Adam never sinned. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You're walking in the blessing. And the blessing is the source of everything. Come on, somebody. Do you realize that God has never stopped the garden? God never stopped the garden of Eden. Eden means abundance. You mean that God put Adam into the garden of abundance? That's what the word, that's what the word means. Eden is, the definition of Eden means abundance. Man was always supposed to walk in abundance. How many believe that God walks in abundance? How many believe that He wants His children to walk like He does? The guy has golden streets. Come on, he's got streets of gold. Hallelujah. He's got mansions. He's got, and, and matter of fact, he, if, if there's something he lacks, he just speaks it into existence. And God is saying, if there's anything you lack, speak it into existence. There's a promise on it. God's already worked it out. Hallelujah. How many found Luke chapter 19? Luke chapter 19, verse 20. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 19, verse 20. And another came, saying, Lord, behold, here is your pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin. Uh, I'm sorry. Where are we? No, I'm sorry. Luke chapter 19, verse 11. Verse 11. What did I say? Verse 11. And as they heard these things, he added and spoke a parable, because he was near to Jerusalem, and because they uh, thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. They thought the kingdom of God would immediately appear. He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his ten servants <coughs> and delivered them ten pounds, money, and said to them, Occupy till I come. Occupy Till I come. The word occupy here in the Greek is a military term. It literally means to conquer, to take the land, to overcome in this world. God said, I'm going to be gone for two days, but it's going to seem like 2,000 years. <laughs> he said, I'm going to be gone, and I want to give you substance, money. I'm going to give you substance. And I want you to multiply it. I want you to do the things you saw in Genesis chapter 1. I want you to, I mean, I want you to be fruitful with it, multiply it, do all the things that I called you to do, both natural and spiritual. But he goes on to say, he says, and, and he said, I want you to occupy. I want you to take the land. I want you to overcome it. And I literally, he said, I want you to conquer it. I don't want the enemy to conquer this land. I, he, God is saying, this land, this world belongs to you. You got it back. The prince of this world has been in control too long. 
It's time for the church to speak forth the word of the living God and take their inheritance. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Occupy. Occupy. Everybody say occupy. Occupy till I come. Hallelujah. Subdue. Subdue the world. Subdue the earth. Dominate it. Occupy it. Overcome the obstacles. Rise up with the wisdom of God. Take forth that which God has promised and establish it the same way He did by your decree, the decree of, the, uh, of a king. Woo! Glory to God. We, we've got to know what we've got. Amen? Turn with me to Matthew chapter 12. We've got an inheritance. And that inheritance, we have the ability now <laughs> because of what Jesus did, we have the ability to walk in it. Walk in this world, walk in this, on this earth, just like Adam did. Amen. Matthew chapter 12, and go down here, verse 33. Thank you, Lord. Either make the tree good, in its fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt, for the tree is known by its fruit. The tree is known by its fruit. An apple tree will be have apples. An orange tree will have oranges. A lemon tree will have lemons. But God said, you're trees, trees of righteousness. Now notice, O generation of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You know, in counseling, all I got to do is be quiet for a while and let somebody talk, and they, out of the abundance of their heart, they're, gonna, they're just going to spew out everything. And, and really, they don't even realize what they're doing. But, and even, even when you're witnessing to somebody, out of the abundance of their heart, They'll say, well, yeah, I'm a, I'm a Christian, you know. And, uh, man, I think I'm a bleep a bleep uh, a good person and, and blah, blah. And, and you're saying, oh, uh, okay. <laughs> well, what did you do? You saw what was in their heart. But you know what? If you get the Word of God in your heart, how do you do that? By the reading of it. Faith cometh by hearing and by hearing the Word of God. As you keep getting the Word in your heart, it gets established in your heart. And out of the abundance of your heart, you will speak the word. Now notice. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man, out of the good treasure of the heart, the treasure, what is that? The word of God, brings forth, brings forth good things. How many would like to bring forth some good things in your life? An evil man, out of the evil treasure, brings forth evil things. So we've got to begin <coughs> to realize we're back into the garden. Just as if Adam never sinned. We have the Bible, which is the tree of life. Come on. The Bible. How many know uh, the Bible for years? Now, I know we've got it on our phones and on tablets and so forth. But the Bible, in, in what we have, uh, many of you here, is made out of paper, which comes from trees. Come on, somebody. And so when you hold that Bible, you can actually think this is made from wood, the paper, and that, that Bible is made from a tree. And really that, that Bible is the tree of life. Now Jesus is the tree of life, but Jesus is the Word. And so back there where Adam was being groomed in sonship, we now are being groomed in sonship by the reading of the Word. And we're beginning to know the principles of the kingdom. And we're beginning to know who we are. And we're beginning to know how the kingdom functions. And we're beginning to know what belongs to us. You see, what belongs to us is our inheritance. Hallelujah. And so God's trying to get it into your hands. Amen? Amen. And so we're back to a garden mentality. You can walk according to the knowledge. Everybody say knowledge. knowledge. The knowledge of the... Of the <laughs> The tree of good and evil. Now, how many know the tree of good and evil is how most people live? They try to be good enough to get to heaven. 
And at the same time, they're doing a lot of evil junk. And that's where most people are in the world. And some in the church. You, every day, you have a choice of which tree you're going to, you're going to eat of. God said, as you eat of the word, now it will go forth and become the treasure of your heart. What is your heart? Your heart is the new garden. Your heart is where you plant the seed of the word. When you plant the seed of the word in your garden, which is the garden of Eden or the garden of abundance, you're planting the seed of God in your heart and out of the mouth, out of the abundance of the garden, the mouth speaks what you have now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This is how God, God has it. And matter of fact, many times he, he spoke these things in parables because most people, uh, they're not going to do it. And, they, and if they did do it, they'd do it, you know, their way. And so we need our eyes to be enlightened. We need the wisdom of God concerning who we are. And we need the wisdom of God concerning what belongs to us. We're the children of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bible wisdom is the treasure <laughs> that brings forth good things. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. We've got an inheritance. Hallelujah. The way God set this up was so that there had to be a sacrifice. And Jesus, God's only begotten Son, became that sacrifice. But out of that came an inheritance. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and uh, verse 19. For the wisdom <clears throat> of this world is foolishness with God. The wisdom of this world is foolishness. For it is written, He takes the wise in, in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise. Are you seeing this? He knows the thoughts of the wise, uh, that they are vain. Therefore, let no man glory in men. For all things are yours. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life, or death, or things present, or things to come, all are yours. And you are Christ, and Christ is God. Christ is God's. In other words, you are in, Christ is in God, and we're in Christ, and everything that is in Christ, hallelujah, has all things, because Christ has all things, come on, somebody going to get this, and all things have been given to the church. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. So all things have been given to us. And we walk in the blessing. And now we, we know we call the end from the beginning. We call those things which be not as though they were. We do the same thing He did when He created everything. He created everything in Genesis chapter 1. And then He says, now I want you to do the same thing. Matter of fact, the very first thing that God said to Adam was, I want you to name all the animals. Do you know when you name an animal or name anything, you're giving it identity? We could have called this Little Faith Church. I don't think it would have been a good thing. <laughs> it would have given it identity, but probably the wrong identity. Well, it would have been the wrong identity. What did we do? We called it Great Faith Church. Why? Because it gave it identity. When you uh, name your child, you, you give your child identity you, by naming your child. You name your business. You, you name things all the time. People say, well, all that name it and claim it stuff uh, that you talk about. Well, uh, do you realize you name stuff all the time? People name things all the time. Uh, you, you name your business. You name, if you, if you create something, you name it. You, if, you, if you came up with a game or, or, or something to merchandise, you'd name it. Whatever it is in life, you put an identity to it. My wife had her own business. She named her business. Uh, people name their children. You name your dog. You don't just say, come here, dog. 
You call the dog. Amen. And you call it a name, and then he knows when to come. Amen. Hallelujah. I did know somebody, they named their, their dog Dioji. And I said, oh, that's an interesting name, Dioji. He said, yeah, it's D-O-G. Anyway. <laughs> Dioji. Hallelujah. God created us to be like him. When Adam named the bear, it didn't roar until he named it a bear. When he named the eagle an eagle, it didn't soar until he called it an eagle. It didn't have the majesty of what, it, what its potential would be. When you name something, you give it potential. When you name something, you give it all of the creative source of the blessing. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Woo. The kingdom. The kingdom is within you. The kingdom is within you. The kingdom is within. I thought the kingdom was out here. No, the kingdom is in the garden. The kingdom is in your heart. The kingdom is within you. Hallelujah. And then it comes forth out of your mouth. Every promise, every principle of the kingdom is planted in your garden. Glory be to God. You getting this tonight? Hallelujah. You're not working from an outside world. You're not working from an outside world. You're working from the inner man. You're working from an inside position. You're not working from an out... The outside position... Now, they've already said that uh, we've gone from inflation to recession. Uh, economists now say we've entered into recession. Well, uh, our president has done a great job in that. He got us to recession in, in the fastest, I think, of any president. Uh, I don't know if that's a good thing, but he did it fast. And, uh, but how many know we're not working the kingdom from an outward position? Recession is in the outward position. We work it from the inward position where there is fullness, flourishing, exceeding abundantly above anything we could ask or think according to the power that's working in us according to the source, according to the blessing. All these things are from the inward, not the outward. The outward has recession. The outward has problems. Well, I don't know how I'm going to have enough gas. I don't know how I'm going to have enough baby formula. I don't know how I'm going to have enough toilet paper. Well, let me tell you something. You're going to have more than enough. Hallelujah. Why? Because you serve the God of more than enough. You serve El Shaddai, not El Chipo. You serve the God who is more than enough. And when you realize you serve the God of more than enough, then you can enter in by placing all of that abundance in your heart, which is the garden of abundance. You place it in there, and then when you get it, when it becomes real to you, it will come out your mouth and become your confession of faith. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm preaching myself happy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're not going according to the outward. Whatever is in this world, we're not of this world. We're of a different kingdom. And we work, or th we work the kingdom. And the kingdom is within. Joshua chapter 1. Joshua. Joshua chapter 1. Great chapter. Joshua chapter 1. Let's start in verse 3. Every place... I want everybody to say every place. Every place. <laughs> every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given to you, as I said to Moses. From the wilderness and this, is, uh, and this Lebanon, even to the great river, the river Euphrates, all of the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea, hallelujah, toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you, nor forsake you. Be strong, be strong and of a good courage, no fear. For to this people shall you divide for an inheritance. Everybody say the, an inheritance. 
Your inheritance is the land, the earth, the world. Shall divide for you an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be you strong and very courageous, that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Turn not from it to the right hand or the left. I've got an inheritance for you. Don't turn from the right hand or the left. Don't go a different direction. <clears throat> that you may prosper wherever you go. This book, this book of the Torah, the, the, the part of the book that they had at that time, this book shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate there, therein day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein, that you'll do the word, for then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall have good success. Good success in what? Your inheritance. Well, what is the inheritance? Everything that's in this world. And it was given, come on somebody, I, I mean Abraham got a hold of it, every patriarch was wealthy, come on, Solomon at his, uh, in the Old Testament he was the wealthiest man that ever lived of anybody, and, and people from all over the world would come just to see the, the wealth of Solomon. Uh, Abraham, we mentioned he had, he had gold and silver and, and flocks and, and uh, uh, maidservants and servants and, and uh, donkeys and camels. And, I mean, camels was big time. I mean, he had everything. Glory to God. He, he had wealth. And so here it's saying, I want to bring you into a promised land. I want to bring you into a promised land. I promised you this. A land that was like, a land that is like the garden. A land of abundance. A land that flows with milk and honey. A land that is blessed. Matter of fact, the harvests are so big because they were, they were cultivated by giants. Hallelujah. I mean, you, if you want to get a good land that's flourishing, have giants preparing it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And, and so that's what they did. And, and uh, God said, I've got this plan for you. I, and how many know God's got something planned for you? God's already planned out. Uh, he's always had a garden mentality. The garden mentality first was to Adam. Then he brought it through Abraham. And then he brought the children of Israel into the promised land, which was a representation of the garden of abundance. But then through Jesus Christ, we now have the garden within. Parable of the Sower says we plant that seed of the Word in our hearts now. We become the garden, and out of the garden we speak the Word, just like Adam was supposed to do before the fall, and we speak the Word of the living God, and we cause our garden in life to flourish everywhere we go. Hallelujah. You've got to step over your Jordan. You've got to take a step of faith. You've got to believe that there's something on the other side. You've got to believe that God has something planned for you. You've got to believe that God has, ooh, oh, glory be to God. I mean, just the glory of God. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, when I, I, I started in the traveling ministry, uh, I was speaking at some small churches here and there. And I, I said, Lord, I, I don't want to be speaking in small churches the rest of my life. Lord, I believe you've got some some big plans for me. But how many know I had to start speaking it? You know, actually, in the beginning, I was speaking against it. Why, well, why, Lord, why am I, you know, I, that place that I just spoke at, they gave me such a small offering, and I ended up sleeping on the floor, and, <laughs> and, and, and it's just bad news. I mean, you know, barely, you know, getting by. And so I said, Lord, I, I just believe you got, you've got good things. And I began to speak what the Word said about it. And how the Word said, He'll make room for you. Come on. Your gift or your calling will make room. And I began to speak the Word of the living God. And I began to see bigger churches and conferences and then television and, 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 and mega churches. And God began to started staying in Hilton's and Hyatt's and Marriott. Hallelujah. Why? Because, and let me tell you something, most people who are in the traveling ministry speak once a month. If that. I was speaking almost every day, 50 out of 52 weeks. And, and most weeks I was speaking three or four different places. Why? Because I got booked up because I spoke the word over it. The substance of it was already there. 
the ministry, the calling, my purpose was already planned out when I was in my mother's womb. Hallelujah. And so God said, now I want you to bring it in. And when you bring it in, plant it and speak it and see it come to pass. God will cause you to flourish. Kathleen flourished in her sewing business because she took the same principles, did it the same way. In her sewing school over there, she had over 100 students, and she was flourishing and doing very well before COVID, and still does well. But what did she do? She spoke forth what she wanted. Amen. She spoke forth what she wanted. She spoke it forth. People would say, well, you can't do that. People are not interested in that anymore. didn't matter what people were interested in. What matter is she had the source inside her to bring it to pass. You have the source in you of the blessing to bring it to pass. You have the source of the word to bring it to pass. You have the source of God in you. You are a God. <laughs> You're a God, man, or woman. You are a child of the King. You have everything it will take to have all sufficiency, to have everything that God has planned for you. And God has planned a whole lot more than what you're seeing. A whole lot more than what you're seeing. I went into a church in Oklahoma City, and uh, I was preaching on, on uh, concepts, ideas, and witty inventions. And I, I preach it from the Word of God, how God had concepts, ideas, and witty inventions to cause you to flourish. And I asked the people, how many here have your own business? And about 15 to 20% raised their hand. That meant over 80% of the people didn't have their own business. And I said, you have, God has already given you concepts, ideas, and witty inventions and he already has the substance to give to you of what you need and give you the wisdom on how to do it. I went back to that church a year later and I asked the same question. Because I knew the pastor, he continued on Wednesday nights to teach what I was teaching. The next year when I went into that place, I said, how many have their own business? Over 80% of the people raised their hands. It had flip-flopped. And now that church was flourishing because they took hold of the Word of God. They took hold of the truth. They didn't say it can't be done or I don't see how it's going to be. No, they just applied the Word and spoke. They planted the Word, spoke the Word, and believed the Word. Hallelujah. And God began to give them witty inventions, concepts, ideas. Ideas just come to their head. Glory to God. Really coming to their spirit. God wants to do that for you. Amen? Praise the Lord. God's bringing you into your promised land. God's bringing you into your garden. He's trying to show you that you've been redeemed. Redeemed from the curse. You're in the blessing. And the blessing produces the abundance. Hallelujah. The Word is seed. The Word is seed and it will produce the inheritance. It's His last will and testament. You will prosper. When you work the word of your inheritance, you will prosper and have good success. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You focus, meditate. Meditate means focus. Chew, focus, chewing on the word, focusing on the word, concentrating on the word of God till it becomes from logos to rhema. It, the light goes on and it's now yours. And you got it. And now you're speaking it. And you're causing it to come to pass. I'm going to end tonight in Deuteronomy chapter 28. Anybody anything out of this tonight? Time to get our inheritance. Amen? The enemy's lied to you and lied to you about your inheritance. Well, some glad morning you'll get your inheritance. You don't need healing in, in heaven. You don't, you don't need anything of this world in heaven. No, God said, I'm going to give you the cattle on a thousand hills. And those cattle are not, that cattle is not in heaven. It's right here waiting on your faith. Hallelujah. And so many other things that he promised. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 28. And uh, let's start in verse 1. And it shall come to pass if you shall hearken or listen diligently to the voice of the Lord your God. In other words, the, the ramas 
to observe and to do all His commandments which I command you this day, that the Lord your God will set you on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on you and overtake you, chase you down. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the field. That, that means you're blessed in the city, you're blessed in your harvest fields. Blessed shall be the fruit. I mean, no, that was part of Genesis chapter 1, be fruitful. Blessed shall be, uh, be the fruit of your body and the fruit of your ground and the fruit of your cattle and the increase of your cattle and the flocks of your sheep. In other words, all of your possessions. Blessed shall be your basket and your store. You're not just going to the store, you got a basket. Blessed shall you be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out. This is the blessing of Abraham, which is you are the seed of Abraham, Woo, glory to God. The Lord shall cause your enemies that rise up against you to be smitten before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. <laughs> there you go, wow! The, <laughs> the Lord shall command, everybody say command. Do you know there's more than ten commandments? And this is very interesting. God says here, He says, The Lord shall command the blessing upon your storehouse. He commands you to have overflow. Well, how could God command us to have overflow? Well, because he, when He spoke the blessing over Abraham, He said, I'm going to bless you so that you can be a blessing. How many know you can't be a blessing unless you have more than just for you? See, greed is only wanting enough for yourself. Greed is not prosperity. Greed is not overflow. Greed is what you do with it. Greed is saying, I only want it for myself. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So, here it says, I command your storehouses, your savings accounts, your IRAs, your, your, your businesses, your investments. I command them to overflow so you have more than just for you. That you have enough now for your neighbor. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. There's nothing that this church can't do. Hallelujah. There's nothing that we can't do together. Glory to God. Why? Because God is our source and He's commanded the overflow of your storehouses. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <coughs> and, and spiritually, this church is a storehouse. You have your storehouses collectively, and this is a storehouse here. Amen. <coughs> verse 9. Uh, well, let's, let's go back to verse 8. And in all that you set your hand to, no, I read that wrong, and some of the things you set your hand to, a few of the things that you set your hand, no, no. <laughs> Everybody say all. Are you kidding me? Wow. And all that you set your hand to, <laughs> in other words, I command the blessing on everything, your storehouses and all you set your hand to. Whew. And he shall bless you in the land which the Lord your God gives you. In other words, I'm still trying to give you an inheritance. The things in this world. Why? Because God made man for earth. Oh, yeah. When we go to the marriage supper of the Lamb, we'll rejoice. What a wonderful day that'll be around the throne of God. But we come right after that, we come right back here to rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years, the millennium, on planet earth. Verse 9, the Lord shall establish you a holy people to himself. As he uh, has sworn to you, if you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways and walk in his word, and all people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of you. <laughs> and the Lord shall make you plenteous, abundant in goods. 
in the fruit of your body, in the fruit of your cattle, in the fruit of your ground, in the, in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. In other words, everything in the land that you're in shall flourish. The Lord shall open to you His good treasure. I like it when He says, I'm going I'm to take from my wallet, glory to God. He said, I want to bless you according to my riches and glory. The heaven to give the rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hand and you shall lend to many nations and you shall not borrow. In other words, you should get to the point, there's nothing wrong, I want to make this very clear, nothing wrong with borrowing. There's some people that teach that you can't borrow. Well, if borrowing is evil, then lending is evil. Because all you're doing is contributing to them borrowing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? No, there is a time that, that people borrow. But the blessing is trying to get you to the point where you have so much, taking it out of the source, speaking it out of the source, believing that the blessing is yours, that you get to the point where you're the lender, not the borrower. Did you hear what I said? You have so much overflow. Matter of fact, your, your overflow is commanded to be blessed. You're walking in such, you're flourishing. Everything, you, the God's open heaven is pouring down on you. You're in abundance. You're no longer the borrower. God can get you to that point. Hallelujah. Why? Because He's the source of it. He's the source of it. Nothing wrong with borrowing. He's just saying, I'm going to get you to the point where you're the lender. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Are you hearing what I'm saying in all this? Hallelujah. We need to understand. We've got to rightly divide the word of truth. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Look what it says. Thank you, Lord. Uh, verse 13. And the Lord shall make you the head and not the tail. And you shall be above only and not beneath. If that you listen to the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day to observe and to do that. In other words, I'm trying to make you the head, not the tail. I'm trying to make you above and not beneath. And when you go to uh, the New Testament, God is saying the blessing of Abraham, which is Deuteronomy 28. He said, I have now caused through the blood of Jesus the blessing of Abraham for everybody, for all the seed. And he said, but it's by faith. You've got to believe that it belongs to you. You've got to believe in the inheritance. You've got to believe God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And as you believe God that he has an inheritance for you, just as if Adam never sinned and that you're to dominate, come on somebody, dominate better than Amazon, come on, you're to, you're to do some things. I, you know, anything the world can do, we can do better. Anything the world can do, we can do better. We, <laughs> we've been given the word of God. I said, we've been given the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and it's not just so we can heap it up unto ourselves like the heathen do. No, we're to be using this for the glory of God. He said, I've given you wealth to establish my righteous cause. I've given you this so that you'll understand that I have made you uh, uh, stewards of these things so that you will cause my covenant to go around the world. Hallelujah. We've got a plan for television that we are going to go around the world. We are going to be on daily television. Come on, somebody. I already see it. I've already spoken it, and I continue to speak it. Why? And, and we've got the ability to do it now. It took us a while to get to that point, but we've got the ability to do it now. Amen? Amen. And so we've got to begin to see the vision. We've got to see what God's saying collectively and to see it individually. And as we do that, we plant the Word of God in us so that we can receive our inheritance. Say, I will, I will. plant the Word and, and the source of everything that God has for me. I was made for dominion. Inheritance. I will occupy till he comes. Till Jesus comes. I will be fruitful. 
multiply, replenish, and subdue, dominate. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Woo, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. There's, there's a release in the Spirit right now of the Word. How many know that when you hear a Word, you need to take that Word and apply it? And there is, a, a, there is faith that's mixed with that Word. And that faith is rising up inside of you. And God's about to show you some things. Matter of fact, there have already been some things that God showed you in the past, and now He's saying, I want you to pick those things back up. Amen. But there's some new things that He's about to show you. So you'll find those in prayer. How I many know when you get into prayer, you'll begin to find some things that God's already promised? And God's about to release some things and give you your inheritance. Hallelujah. Anybody need prayer before? Jerry. Okay. What's that? Yeah. Okay. Bob, Mary, and Stephanie. Are we still on? <laughs> Please like, share, and make comments. <laughs> Amen. Run over to that, that thing right now. Boom, boom, boom. Amen. Praise God. I believe God will, will take, that, take that as a point of contact for what you're believing for by clicking like. That, that's one of the ways you can join in to link yourself up with that word. Amen. Um, Heavenly Father, we, we just thank you, Lord. Uh, that COVID has no right in their bodies. We thank you, Lord God, that the glory of God is coming on them right now. Oh, hallelujah. Whoo! <laughs> yeah, yeah, Stephanie's been rising up. Yeah, amen. Well, you got it. Take it, take it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bob, yeah, praise God. The glory of God's coming down on that house. The glory of God's coming down on that house. But thank you. By the stripes of Jesus, they were healed almost 2,000 years ago. So we speak it forth. We call them whole in every way. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, amen.